Let's see. So, has anybody been to the Federal Reserve? We used to go up there. We used to take a group up there. And um, you can see them. Um, you can see the supplies of currency and coins that they have. Of course, the mint um, prints the, uh, or, uh, puts out the coins. But um, the, the Fed has a, a huge inventory. They also destroy the currency. Get, they give you a baggie with um, shredded currency as you're leaving. All right. Um, clearing checks. Clearing checks, that's a big deal. Okay. Making sure that the transfer moves from one bank to another. And again, that was huge for 50 years. And that is declining big time because of electronic funds transfer your debit cards or credit cards. Any of you um, not have checks? Who doesn't have checks? Not a lot of you, at least half of you don't have checks. I mean, I still have checkbooks, but I might, I, I don't know, I might write one or two checks a month. And it's usually for a, a service person who says, I don't take debit, debit cards. Why doesn't a person take a debit card? Fees. fees. Or they'll say, I will take a debit card, but it's going to cost you 5% more. Take care of the fees. Yeah. All right. By the way, when a, when a restaurant or business says, I only take cash, why is that? Okay. Yep. They're trying to hide their revenue from the tax man. That's a problem around the world. Okay, um, so they regulate banks and they provide the results of their examinations to the managers and stockholders and to the public about how these banks are doing. I probably need to rewrite that. That's how the book put it. All right, so all national banks chartered by the control, controller of the currency and a few state banks are considered to be member banks of the Fed, Federal Reserve. Federal Reserve, member banks. So all the national banks are member banks and a few state banks. Okay, if you're a member bank, then you are required to buy stock in the district reserve bank of up to 6% of your uh, equity. You have to pay that much, pay up that much to belong to the Federal Reserve System. So the Federal Reserve is considered to be a private entity, but it's really a public-private partnership. And, you know, as we've said before, the Federal Reserve comes in and examines your bank. Everybody up with me? I want to see if we can get to the end of, the, of this chapter. All right, the Board of Governors. Okay, seven people seven people, and they're selected by the president, and they're confirmed by the Senate, unless somebody has a big objection, and they have terms. So it's not unusual for a, a board members who've been picked by previous presidents to continue to serve but it is typical for the chairman to be replaced. And that happened uh, when Biden was elected. He uh, removed Jerome Powell and inserted uh, Janet Yellen. And Janet Yellen was the, um, the board chair under Obama. All right, so the president uh, looks at uh, the 
current members and decides who the chair and vice chair are going to be. And then their terms run concurrent with the president. So the board really tells the 12 banks what they're going to do, how they're going to operate, what their operating procedures are. Whoops, sorry. So this board is the governing board, Board of Governors. They tell the system how it's going to work. So let's look at some of the tools. All right. Open market policy. FOMC, the Federal Open Market Committee. All right. So they implement the buying and selling of securities from primary dealers. This is how they implement monetary policy. By controlling the amount of liquidity that is out there in the system by buying and selling securities. Okay. So the Federal Reserve has a trading desk. They used to have 35 primary dealers, but those have merged away. And so we have 20. So the Fed sets up requirements and then allows uh, certain companies to be dealers. Okay, primary dealers. And there's a list on the next slide. Okay? So the open market operation um, is, can be done very quickly. If there's a problem, it, policy changes can be implemented very quickly. Okay, and that's a big um, advantage of this tool. And so the FOMC, this is the group that decides how they're going to make and implement monetary policy through the Open Market Committee. Whoops. Okay. We'll take a look at the FOMC. First, we'll look at um, the primary group. All right, so you can see list of names here. These are big um, commercial banks and investment banks. Okay. Very large, strong institutions that are members of the Federal Reserve system. Uh, they're member banks and they uh, are members of the primary dealers list. So the Federal Reserve trades with these banks in order to implement monetary policy. It's really important. So I just sent a letter out to my clients, a year in letter, and the short of it is 2020 was a challenging year in many respects, but it was a very good year for investors. And a lot of people are saying, how can that be? We had a terrible year in the economy. And the answer is, Congress and the Federal Reserve. They pumped money, trillions of dollars, into the system, just like they did in 2010. And that propped up the financial markets. And that's the short of it. That's the short answer. Okay? All right. So the, the focus of the FOMC is to adjust the liquidity in the financial system and they do that by targeting the federal funds rate. The federal funds rate, which we'll discuss in just a second. So the focus of the FOMC is to control the cash and credit available in the system. Okay? 
and they do it by targeting the federal fund rate, funds rate, and the federal funds rate is the rate that banks charge on overnight loans that are made from bank to bank every night to ensure that the bank um, complies with reserve requirements. The Federal Reserve says every bank has to have a certain percentage of their assets set aside in safe investments and they have to do a reconciliation every night. And if a bank runs short, some banks run short and some banks have a surplus. And so a bank that runs short, their first stop is to call another bank that, that might have a surplus. And they borrow overnight Okay, to meet their reserve requirements. And the interest rate that is charged on that is called the Fed funds rate. And that reflects the liquidity, that is one measure of liquidity in the system. Okay. So this Fed funds rate influences the rates that banks charge on other loans. So you can you can target the federal funds rate, and by doing that, you help target uh, interest rates throughout the economy. Now, on longer term loans, the 10 year Treasury bill rate, or Treasury bond rate, is more important on longer term loans. But on shorter term loans and adjustable rate loans, the Fed funds rate is really important. Now, some central banks focus on the money supply, not on the interest rate, and some focus on the inflation rate. That's what their focus is, and that's what their that's how they conduct monetary policy. Their policy depends on targeting the money supply or the inflation rate. Now, the the central bank, the, the Fed, does keep a close tab on the money supply and they keep a very close rate on the inflation rate. And for the last oh, 15 years or so, the Federal Reserve has struggled. They want a 2% inflation rate. The problem in the United States is not too much inflation, it's not enough. Okay? And so they want a modest level of inflation and they've been struggling to get the economy to grow fast enough for there to be a little bit of inflation. I don't think that's going to be a problem going forward. Okay? And economists study these, these subjects all the time. What should monetary policy and fiscal policy look like? And that's one of the things the Federal Reserve does. They have a, 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 a deep research department, and they employ economists, and they study the major economic issues of our time and what the possible solutions are and what the Federal Reserve and the federal government should be doing to make things better in our country. Okay. So the Fed does not focus on money supply anymore. They have in the past or on the inflation rate because it causes interest rates to jump around. And the Fed, based on their studies, believes that a stable interest rate, that doesn't mean that interest rates don't move, it means they move in ways that people can trust. They don't go up and down and up and down and up and down because if interest rates go up and down, you never know when to borrow or when to pay back. Okay, so they want borrowers to feel confident and stable interest rates are important to do that. Or part two. Alright. More about the FOMC, the seven voting members. Okay. And um, and then you have um, five other members, so they're 12 in total. And they run the Federal Reserve banks. So district presidents and Federal Reserve bank presidents. And they serve one year terms. 12 people, 
And it's interesting, I'm not sure where this uh, derives from, but the, the president of the New York Fed is always a voting member. They meet every six weeks. Okay? And people, investors around the world keep a very close eye on the U.S. Federal Reserve. The meetings take place in D.C. This is a new comment. The chairman of the Federal Reserve Board holds a press conference after each meeting of the FOMC to provide highlights of the meeting. So everybody knows when the meetings are, and then right after the meetings happen, the Fed Reserve Chairman has a press conference and announces the highlights of the meeting. Okay? And then three weeks later, a full transcript of the meeting is released. But that's really kind of an anticlimactic event. Uh, the big deal is the press conference. And i got to tell you that, um, and I mentioned this before, that the Federal Reserve Chairman uh, is considered to be one of the most powerful people in the world. They don't, they don't make that much money, but they set policy, and they can cause markets to go nuts if they're not careful. It's happened before. All right, so on the next slide, we'll see um, what a, a meeting transcript looks like. All right. So, information received since the Federal Open Market Committee met in November, okay, so this is a following meeting, following November, suggests that economic activity has continued to pick up and that the deterioration in the labor market is abating. Okay? So, when you see this, your first thought is uh, the economy is getting a little bit better. That's good. That's good for in stock investors. But typically, when you see that economic activity is picking up, what else do you think of? And that the labor market might uh, start to tighten up. What else are you thinking? This could lead to what? Inflation. If inflation goes up, what else goes up? Interest rates. And if, it, if this interest rates go up, what comes down? Bond prices. So if you're long in the bond market, as soon as this comes out, people are going to be selling their long bonds. All right, the housing sector has shown some signs of improvement. Businesses are still cutting back on fixed investment. Okay, so if you own uh, housing stocks, then or thinking about it, you might jump in. If you are thinking about buying uh, technology and, and, uh, and equipment stocks, probably won't yet. Businesses are still cutting back. So there's a lot of um, innuendo in this transcript for investors. Okay? Uh, economic activity is likely to remain weak for a while. Okay? So what does that tell you? Well, that's an offset. So this guy, or lady, is doing uh, language gymnastics. First, things are getting better, but they're likely to remain weak. So when you see that, you take a deep breath and go, okay, so what this means is nothing's changing in terms of um, interest rate policy. Nothing's changing. Okay? The committee expects that inflation will remain subdued for some time and will maintain the target range for the federal funds rate at zero to a quarter of a percent. Very, very, very low. Okay? So what this is saying is steady as we go. We're seeing a little bit of improvement in certain areas of the, of the market. Looks like unemployment has bottomed. It looks like economic activity is starting to pick up a little bit, except for uh, fixed investment but we don't expect a quick rebound. And that was the other thing I told my clients, for what do I expect for 2021? I expect the first half of 2021 to look a whole lot like the second half of 2020. Not a whole lot of changes. 
What's the key development for 2021? For the world. That's the key development. What is it? The vaccine. Yeah, the vaccine. And what's happening with the vaccine? We're having all kinds of problems with the rollout. Why? I'll tell you why. Because the freaking government is doing it. That's why all you socialists who think, well, the government can do this, the government can do that, the government can do this, the government can do that. Turn this over to the government. Let the government do it. I'm telling you. Ronald Reagan said it in 1980. Okay? The government is not the answer to your problems. The government is a big part of your problems. That's just the way it is. On paper, it looks good. So Joe Biden says we're going to have 100 million vaccine people vaccinated in my first 100 days. What's the problem with that? They were already on they were, they were already on schedule to do that. That was Donald Trump's program. Come on. That's politicians, both sides of the aisle, who think we're stupid. So Joe throws that out there, and then it happens, and then Joe says, look what I did. And Donald Trump did the same kind of nonsense. Every politician does. That's why it's a sick and disgusting profession, politics, because of people like that. There are some good people who do it, but there are a lot of people like that who are just bold-faced liars. And they're managed very carefully, even if they want to be honest, the people who manage them tell them what to say. It's sad. And it's both sides of the aisle, folks. Right. Okay. So nothing's going to change. Extended period of time. The Federal Reserve is telling all the um, business leaders and investors, steady as she goes. No big changes happen. Everything's good here. And so the market, I'm sure, rallied on this news. Okay? Because no changes is good. Change can be scary and bad. It scares investors. All right. Okay, so central bank sales and securities requires member banks to use cash. So when the Federal Reserve wants to sell securities that they have on their balance sheet, then the member banks, the, the uh, primary dealers, must buy those securities. And that takes money out of the system. The supply of money goes down, the demand for money stays the same, interest rates go up. That's how the mechanism works. Okay? All right, reduction of cash at the banks means the banks have less cash available to make loans. This causes interest rates to rise, which depresses demand for loans, okay? Which depresses growth which in turn depresses inflation. That's why they do it. Slow down the economy, take some pressure off prices. That's why they do it. Okay. All right. Um, in contrast, central bank purchases, so now the bank has cash, and they're going to buy securities from the banks. The banks have to sell securities to the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve creates credit and money in the system by doing this. More money, same demand, 